okay so seems like uh, you guys are not enjoying the classes or Anyone, any comment? Okay, sir. Let me introduce your profile, then we will proceed with the session. But 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 my voice was clear, or not? Yes, sir. Your voice is clear. No, that's good. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all on the third day of Python and Artificial Intelligence Workshop organized by Department of CSC and in association with AI Shala. I would like to introduce the speaker for today, Dr. Akshay Agarwal, sir. Sir was a postdoctoral scientist at the University at Buffalo, New York, USA from Jan 2021 to September 2022. Sir has received his doctoral degree from IIIT Delhi, India in 2020. Sir is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Data Science and Engineering at IISER Bhopal. Sir has also worked as research assistant professor at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, USA from December 2019 to December 2020. Sir's PhD thesis title is Panoptic Defenses for Secure Computer Vision. It has won the IEEE Biometrics Council Best Doctoral Dissertation Award 2021. His research interests are machine learning and deep learning with applications in the security of biometrics and deep learning with security of biometrics. Then, Sir has also received Dean's Award for Innovation Research and Development for two consecutive years in 2018 and 2019 at IIIT Delhi. Sir has also authored over 30 publications, including journals and, uh, and reputed conferences, including ICML, CBPI, NUR IPS. And he's also a reviewer of top journals such as IEEE TIFS, IEEE TNNLS, and PR. Thank you so much for being here, sir. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of CSD department. Thank you so much. Yeah, th thank you, Sanan. Okay, so I so again the same question. So you guys are not enjoying or what's the issue? I think today's the attendance is very low, I think, right? Okay, yeah. anyway, I'm not sure whether you guys are like speaking or not allowed to speak or what's the issue. Okay, anyway, uh, is my screen visible to everyone? Yes. Okay, so today we will discuss, so I think so far uh, you guys have seen that a uh, few problems related to machine learning and maybe the introduction of Python as well, I think. <clears throat> and then yesterday, I think Ayushi was teaching regarding how we can perform the classification, especially the image classification using, I think, CNN uh, sheet dot. So today, today we will see another interesting uh, problem in machine learning domain or AI domain. Uh, couple of problems we are going to see. First is like, suppose if you want to invest in something, whether it's stock price, whether it's a Bitcoin, or suppose you want to buy a house, then obviously uh, the first question will be like, should I invest now? And what should be the ideal price? Right. Then, yeah, so that, that's the pro first problem that we will see uh, that how a machine learning algorithm can help you there or what kind of machine learning you need to use. Okay, then second thing, uh, I think that that's optional. Uh, I will see, depend upon the time. So everyone, uh, I think uh, we all read the news, whether from social media domain, whether from the online news portal, or maybe the hard copy, right? So, and we are also seeing a issue related to whether the news is real or fake. So fake is basically false news. 
that might have multiple purposes like someone wants to just create some kind of problem in the society someone just want to blackmail someone or just want to raise illegal money or something right but for you uh, you want to be aware about whether it's a wrong news basically the fake news or it's a real news i think everyone of us are dealing with this uh, kind of issue then we will see like uh, because most of the times we are capturing the images whether our mobile phone or dslr camera or anything and machine learning has shown a tremendous success as well so can machine learning algorithm be used to generate the images you guys think that that's possible uh, if not i will see uh, whether it's possible or not and how it can be a possible okay so if there is no doubt whether it's related to previous classes or something if you have any doubt like someone has asked uh, maybe some doubts were left or something if, if, if there is any doubt from the last class as well you can ask otherwise i will maybe start students who are having doubt kindly ask now unmute yourself any doubt maybe uh, related to logistic or any any lectures you have listened so far yeah good evening kishore uh, you have any question mm, okay then let's start okay so the first problem uh, which we are going to see is so suppose i want to invest in something so what do you think uh, how how we can solve that issue so first thing which we can do is like we can go uh, for expert and ask to that expert like can i invest now in that particular stock or something or suppose uh, can i just buy uh, the bitcoin with this rate but do you think that's a feasible option not every time right because not everywhere we can find an expert even we can find an expert but it's not possible or maybe the feasible that uh, the expert belongs to that particular domain in which we want to uh, perform some kind of action suppose we have the uh, expert uh, which can help us for stock price but maybe he is or she is not aware about the bitcoin prices or not be aware about what should be the ideal price when you want to purchase a house all right second thing maybe uh, the experts are there but obviously if the expert is uh, giving you the service you have to pay a good amount if depend upon the knowledge uh, and the experience of the expert obviously you might have to pay a hefty amount maybe sometimes lakh or million or or maybe multi million rupees right and sec uh, another issues might be like the expert might have the global information or the local information but might not that might not be relevant to that particular community that might local geographical reason and all those things so because as a human we have a limited knowledge uh, it, it's not like we can store everything in our mind we might forget something we might not remember whatever uh, we have seen so far so there are a lot of issues around this uh, approach where we need to maybe ask some expert for some kind of solution all right so suppose uh, let's see a few example we want to buy a house so there are suppose four criteria you are say, seeing that or you want to consider before uh, finalizing the price or finalizing the house how many rooms are there or basically the bedrooms are there then what is maybe the area of the hall what is the area of the kitchen and how the kitchen is looking and all those things maybe and then the overall area of the house these are some random values and the random price which i just mentioned those might not be the perfect or ideal uh, values but and again it's all depend upon uh, individual to individual like how much weight you want to give to bedroom how much weight you want to give the hall area and the balconies and all those things then the kitchen area or, or the overall area of the house 
so basically the weight means uh, we have to assign some kind of values or weight like the strength like how much importance we want to give to this particular factor of a house and this factor can also be uh, problematic when you are selecting an expert right because expert might have the very limited knowledge then let's see the second you want to buy a stock price so stock price might have the opening right so in the morning the stock market opens so it will open with certain price then it might have a closing price as well right then how he the how high the stock is going that that might be another feature or factor similarly how low a stock might go depend on all these features obviously you want to buy or sell your stock or you want to buy or sell your bitcoin if the stock is going uh, in the downward direction obviously the price of low will be will be towards the downside and you might have to sell if you want to avoid any kind of monetary losses similarly if the price is going high you might have to keep that stock so that you can earn a lot of money so again different factors or different weights you might apply to different uh, features open close high and low based on what you want to predict like suppose you want to predict the close maybe prediction basically means suppose uh, i know these are the features open high and low and i want to predict whether this will be what will be the closing price of a particular stock or uh, the bitcoin understood so what kind of technique uh, you think you can apply if if we have to maybe without machine learning what do you think how we, how you can solve solve that particular problem using some mathematics or some something so maybe uh, in our 10th standard or 12th standard uh, or maybe uh, before that we have seen a line fitting uh, kind of problem where we suppose have one feature like x or suppose the input we have so suppose we have one x input uh, suppose in case of the stock price we have the open open as one feature x and we want to predict y y is basically suppose we have the closing we want to predict the closing price all right so what 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 was the ideal uh, equation for line fitting y equal to mx plus c right or if you want you can just avoid c as well so y equal to mx so m is basically what so as i as, as i was telling you that you have to consider some kind of weight like how much weight you think the open price or what impact the open price has on the closing price so that basically means by the weight the impact similarly you suppose you have three features the impact of all three features might be completely different open price might have a different impact as compared to high price or low price so suppose it has an impact of 0.5 so 50% probability is that that the open price is the price which is going to affect the closing price or 40% is a chance that high price is going to affect the closing price or similarly there is a high chance the person is going to buy a house at a higher rate if the area is high so you want to give a higher impact or you want to give a higher weightage to the area reason depend upon obviously uh, you might have already done some kind of survey and you have seen that the pupils are giving higher weightage to the area feature so that's basically in machine learning you are seeing that as a training data the survey thing where you have the data and you have some kind of label so data is basically suppose uh, this these four points or those these four features become will become your data feature and this basically become your label all right so the only difference uh, from the problem statement which you have seen yesterday is that the label there was discrete labels because we want to predict a class the class of a data point will be a discrete value because one image will belong to one class only right so that's why and the class will be 1 the 2 3 4 all those things but the price can be any value i mean 
30 lakh 30 lakh 50000 30.5 basically or 40.25 40.05 something so it can be real value and we have to now predict the real value because house price will not be a discrete value only it can be a real value similarly the stock price or the bitcoin price all right so it's clear so far so here <clears throat> So as I was talking about, like the simplest solution can be is in the form of line fitting. Why why I'm saying it's a line fitting problem, and why it's a line or linear uh, kind of uh, function, because line is basically a linear function, right? A linear function because it's a dot product between m and x, and c is basically the scalar value. So no non-linear function is there. Basically, no polynomial, nothing is there. X square, XQ, and all those things are not there. You are just performing a dot product, or you are performing a linear multiplication or dot product. Just, just a simple dot product. All right. So, in in the line fitting, we are seeing M is a slope. So, basically, what is the orientation of your line? And C, you are saying the intercept. What is the translation of that line from the origin, right? Zero comma zero. I hope everyone remembers uh, this simple math from our childhood days or the school days. So can we apply the same thing for the task we want to perform, whether it's a house price prediction, whether it's a stock price prediction, or it's a Bitcoin price prediction. If not that, I think uh, the best example for you guys maybe uh, you want to predict your final grades. So suppose you have 10 assignments in a particular course or five assignments and then you have some quizzes and then you might have the mid sem exam and end sem exam and all those things and the project as well maybe. Then each component might have a different weightage or different impact to your final grade. And again, final grade will be your suppose 85%, 95%, 92.7% or something. So that's again become your real uh, regression kind of problem. So in machine learning, the domain in which you want to predict a real price or real value is called as a regression. So your this grade generation problem or grade Prediction problem is a regression problem. Similarly, the house price prediction, the stock price prediction, the reason is we want to predict our real values as an output. Feature can be discrete or real values, but the final output is real value. Again, as I told you, the price, whether it's a house price, whether it's a Bitcoin price or stock price, all those are real values only. I mean your grades or the final marks you are thinking that this much marks I should get based on whatever previous exams or previous from your previous survey you have seen maybe from your seniors you have asked like how much marks they have got for each individual component and what was his or her final marks then maybe you can learn a machine learning model basically a regression machine learning model to predict the final marks. Now, once the model is trained, or once you got that this much percentage, this much weightage was given to assignment, and this much weightage was given for quizzes, and this much weightage was given for project, then when you receive your own marks, you can apply that weighted and compute a weighted sum w1x1, w2x2, w3x3. And that's how you might guess a rough idea that this much marks I'm going to get in my this course. All right. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, suppose uh, you are in a very doubting scenario, whether you're going to pass or fail or whether you're going to pass a course with honors or something or not. So, right. So I think uh, might be a good motivation to learn the regression problem so that you can <laughs> enjoy the course and you can just uh, keep working to improve your grades all right because it's, 
as a human if there are I suppose thousand features you cannot remember what is the exact weight of each individual features that's where you need some kind of automated algorithm which can remember what was the weight for individual component if there is an individual feature obviously you can remember that this was the weight like suppose we have one feature only so obviously we can remember that 100% weight is there for this feature so, but suppose there are 10 features you cannot remember the weight of each individual feature so that's where you need some kind of automated machine learning algorithm maybe to do that work for you all right what's the issue now we have two parameters as of now because we have a single feature x so m is basically the impact or strength of individual feature x and c is a scalar value only that will remain one only i mean we have 10 features 20 features or whatever but we have to assign some value to m and c all right and that should be like approximately correct or that should be true value of m and c right but the problem might become complex later when you have the multiple features so suppose we have three features x1 x2 and x3 <clears throat> now we have to learn the impact or weight of those three features m1 m2 m3 and see obviously again as i mentioned that this will remain scalar value only all right and learning is not that easy you might have to go back and keep collecting the previous history data and see what was the individual weight or what was the value for individual feature all right and obviously uh, collecting the data and doing all those things is tedious task not everyone can do all those things as well okay so suppose uh, randomly we have chosen some values so suppose uh, we said that m is m should be like 0.45 and c c should be 0 but is that value correct and how we will know that whether this value is correct or not because we can randomly choose any value right the simplest solution anyone can say that oh this that's not an issue uh, just randomly assign some value maybe 50 for m 70 for c so how we will say that the value which someone is saying to you is correct or not so we need some kind of performance metric right the based on which we can only say that uh, this value of m or this value of c is right or wrong or we have to maybe update or tweak our value of m and c without that any performance metric we cannot say this is right or this is wrong or something Right. So suppose if you are walking somewhere and uh, if there is a a tree or something, until unless maybe you uh, hit that tree or something, you cannot say whether you avoid that path or not. Or some kind of reward uh, should be there, or some kind of punishment or penalty should be there. Similarly, someone should tell you that whatever value you are using is right or wrong. Again, you cannot ask every time a human. To tell you that the value is right or wrong you need some kind of automated performance evaluation metric metric is basically the terminology or some kind of definition you are going to use to measure the performance so what exactly we are doing we are predicting or we want the real values as an possible performance measurement Anyone? Waiting for dinner or, or just slept. So, so we have some real values. Obviously, uh, there should be some uh, original value against which we can compare the performance, right? So we already have some kind of true value and some value your network is predicting. So we already have the y value suppose and some value after this mx plus c we are getting so what what we can do 
how we can say that these two values are approximately same or where these two values are completely different from each other or what 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 other we can do what else we can do simplest thing can be just take the difference right y minus whatever value uh, this equation is giving me so we have some true value which we already know like so we already know, suppose if this is the open value and this is the close value and this is the high value, then what will be the low value? But when we are multiplying with this value with M1, which is 0 0.5, and suppose this is 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.1, this is giving you some value, 240 or something, or 100 or something. Then how you will say that this value is the correct value or this value is close to the, what should be the ideal value? So basically we can compute the difference. So 120 minus 100 or 120 minus 240, whatever value the equation is giving to us. All right, that's the simplest thing. We can make it a more complex, maybe the Euclidean distance or Euclidean, like Euclidean is basically the square, y minus y, original y minus whatever value y the network is giving me, then the square of that. Right, Manhattan distance, all those distance we have already heard, like cosine distance and all those things, right? So distance is basically telling me the dissimilarity, how dissimilar the two values are. Right? So, so this will become our loss function because in the machine learning, we need some kind of loss function, which is telling me that how good or bad my machine learning model is. Or basically that is a performance metric only but in the machine learning domain we gave the name is a loss function so for us the loss function will be the simple difference or the euclidean distance whatever distance you want to use euclidean cosine manhattan or simple just the absolute difference between the values and all those things right Euclidean distance as a Manhattan distance or maybe the simple, <coughs> simple <coughs> subtraction value, subtract value. So what next? We got some random value of M and C. We got the measurement. So suppose uh, using the simple difference, it is telling me the difference is of value 20 or difference is of value 40 or 100 or something. Obviously, the higher the difference, the bad the model is because it's a loss and loss should be minimum or close to zero so you are saying the, how, the price of a house is one lakh but ideally it's not one lakh maybe two lakh or three lakh or it's maybe fifty thousand so you are going to pay a higher price and whatever model you are using obviously giving incurring some kind of monetary loss to you so you want to avoid your loss as well so that's basically the loss function means you want to minimize the error obviously if the price is maybe one lakh but or price of two lakh and you're paying one lakh obviously best for you but suppose if the price is fifty thousand and you're paying two lakh obviously not good for you right so you have to minimize that error the possible error so that you can minimize your loss as well. So for that, we have to minimize the distance between the original value or the true possible value and the predicted value. Predictive value we are getting from the, that equation, y equal to mx plus c. We want to minimize that. And so, so, I, so we got our function, f equal to or y equal to mx plus c. So we have, when we have to compute the minimum or maximum of a function, what we do? Again, basic elementary uh, school level math. So we have to compute the gradient, right? How we minimize or maximize any function? How we compute the maxima or minima or any kind of function, right? So we take the derivative and then put it equal to zero, right? That's what we do. Simple thing. And we take the derivative with respect to some kind of variable only. And the variable here is this x feature. Well, these values are changing, or the features values are changing. 200, 1000, 450, 60. So against this value, we have to compute the gradient. 
So suppose we have to compute the gradient with respect to our variable, which is m. Because this value we are going to change. C we are going to change. X is your input. Why? Its value is changing, but it's a fixed value, which you are already you are providing to the network. The thing which you are going to learn is M and C. So against these two values, you have to compute the gradient. Because these two values we are going to learn. And based on these values, the loss will be high or low. So del y divided by del m and del y divided by del c or del y with respect to del c, del y with respect to m. If we take the derivative with respect to m, basically it will be x only, right? C is a constant or a scalar value. So there is no x. So there is no m there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so for the time being, obviously we cannot go uh, much detail in for depth. So suppose we have this uh, function, beta zero again is like C for us and beta one X one. So X one is basically the feature particular at a particular time stamp and beta one basically is for us is M one, M. So we got some value, Y. We are incurring some kind of loss or error, which is basically the true value and whatever the model is giving us. Right, so we are just taking the difference. And now we have to compute the value of beta zero and beta one, or basically C and M. So when you will take the derivative and uh, try to Maybe in this equation will be better to understand. So beta one will be x minus x dash. Basically, x dash means the mean, mean of the x feature. <coughs> and y minus y dash, which is y dash again is a mean of y values. All right. And for beta zero, it will be mean of y, which is which is our basically a label as well. And this is the mean of our feature vector and beta cap is we have are computing from this equation all right so that's how we can learn the weights so once we get the weights we can put those values we have learned beta zero of beta one and suppose we got some feature suppose we got the open price of a stock x we can use these two values, which we have learned our using our training set or using our previous history of knowledge. And we can try to answer the question that what will be the closing price or what will be the high price of a particular Bitcoin or stock based on the opening price or whatever feature you have used to learn those parameter beta zero and beta one. All right. So not, not every time you might have to go to expert and ask like, this is the open price of my stock. What will be the my closing price? And using this simple equation solving uh, process, you can just put the value of opening price or maybe you're, if you're using the closing price, then you can use that as a feature and uh, use this beta zero and beta one to predict whatever you want to predict. Open price, closing price, house, uh, high price or the low price. All right. Uh, any doubt? So that that's basically uh, the theory side. If there is any doubt, uh, let me know. As let's see uh, some programming thing as well, so that it's clear for you that how you can write a code. Any question? I'm not sure. Uh, chat box. Jaya, I don't have any question. Any other, any, anyone else? Okay. So I hope uh, when we need to use the regression, uh, I hope that that's clear. So basically suppose we have to predict a real value or we want some kind of real values as an output. 
like your final score or final marks of a particular course and you have a lot of features like each quiz might have a different weightage similarly each assignment might have a different impact similarly the assignments similarly the midterm exam and the project which we are doing so features obviously might be discrete or the real values but the output here for regression problem will be real value like we have seen for house price stock price bitcoin all those are real values right not not really that can be only the discrete values it can be real values or continuous values all right let's see using some uh, synthetic data or it's not like very uh, real data of your house price or your stock price or anything so suppose we have already uh, just just randomly we have created some data set where x is your feature and y is your label we have used like 0 to 9 maybe one d vector and i think everyone can create some, any kind of data maybe uh, in place of 0 to 9 or it can be very random 0 5 7 2 3 or 1000 1000 or anything similarly you just randomly saying that for 0 the value will be 1 or 1 it will be the value of 2 and all those things all right and then what we have to do we have the single x right as a feature right so single beta 1 will be there and beta 0. There is no other feature. So there is no beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. That's beta 1 only because we want to learn the impact of feature x only. Because, and that's the single scalar value for us right now in this example. And y again is your data label which you want to predict. So what we have seen, we have to compute some, we already uh, done that, uh, that this will be x minus x cap into y minus y cap divided by x minus x cap chi square. And that will be the sum. Like uh, we have seen this beta one will be x, ss, xy, ss, xx, which is basically x minus x cap, which is a mean into y minus y cap. All right. So that's what uh, we already got the equation. So we are computing the mean of our x feature. So mean is basically the function which will compute the mean for us. And I don't think so we need library for everything. It's just the mean, we can compute the mean as well without using any kind of library as well. The sum divided by the number of values we have, all right? So don't think like uh, it's very uh, complex thing because we have to just compute the mean, right? Although we might got the habit that to use the uh, calculator and all those things for everything. But it's again, as a human, we can also do the same thing. It's not very complex task. We have to just compute the mean. <laughs> Similarly for y, <coughs> we compute the mean. And that's for the formula, when you will take the derivative and put it equal to zero, that's how also you will get the value what should be the ideal value of beta zero and beta one. But someone has already solved that equation for us. And we got the formula. Like what should be the ideal value for beta zero and beta one. So this function, without function, you can also do. So this function is giving us the value based on whatever data we are providing to that function, that what should be the ideal value of beta zero and beta one, all right? So we were just providing the value of x and y. Okay. So this x and <coughs> y, right? So we are providing the data set. And this will give us the parameters, beta 0 and beta 1. All right. And then we can plot. So plotting basically because we are using the simple x as a scalar feature. So this will be for us as a line fitting problem. So the network will learn the line where beta 0 will tell you from where the line should start and beta 1 will tell you that orientation of the line and based on the data set we will see whether the line is exactly fitting uh, the data sets or not let's see i think some orientation error or something i'm not sure why done nothing but Still, okay. So based on this value, 0 to 9 as our feature and 1, 3, 2, 5, 7 as a label or the output which we want to predict. 
so for zero <clears throat> the ideal value is one but the network might giving us so okay let's see so what should be the ideal value y predicted equal to we got beta z b v zero as intercept and v one then times x okay v zero right or uh, okay I think that's uh, future v zero v one okay we go let's write the function parameter so, unknown to that function. Let's print this. Zero and B. What's the issue now? Python thing is very okay. So we can see for zero, the network is telling me the value is 1.23. So there is a slight error. While the actual value is one, the network is telling me it's 1.23. I think that that's very negligent, and we can just ignore that value. For three, 2.4, similarly for nine, it's 12. So it's like close to uh, 12 only. So the weights which we have learned using the equation, the equation we have seen is like somewhat telling me that this equation is correct because whatever the output should be, we are getting close to that only. All right. Any, any doubt, it's clear. So we have randomly or synthetically generated some data points, zero, one, two, three, and those are like scalar single value for us and we want to predict some value. This value will always be your scalar value only because we want to predict a single value. We can always predict a single value only. Like the house price will be one value only, right? It cannot be like multiple value. Like this, this can also be a possibility. This can also be a possibility. It might have a fixed price. So we provided some kind of X and Y and we have learned our parameters beta zero and beta one. And then we have used those parameters and see whether these parameters are correct or not. So we provided the feature values and we got some kind of output. So the other thing you can do is like, suppose you don't want to use uh, the training set itself because we should not use the training set. Now we have another data points, 12, 34, where we don't know the exact value, possible value. Suppose we want to purchase a house. We don't know that what will be the ideal path of a particular house, but we know the feature value of that. So for 10, it should be 12.93. So you can just maybe assume that there is a slight error in your network. So it, it should be like 12.5 or 13 maybe, but it should not be beyond that. So whenever you are trying to buy a house or something, so make sure that you are not paying more than that. On, or when you are selling your stock price, make sure that this will be your lowest price till that time you can maybe keep your stock price or your Bitcoin. All right. So this is our like unseen data point where we don't know that what will be the ideal price. So once we learn our parameters or once we have known that this is the impact of this particular feature, we can assume that what will be the final price of a particular thing which we are trying to buy or sell. Or this will be my final grade based on the individual impact of a particular feature vector.
I think I have an example for Bitcoin as well. So for that, we are going to use, uh, so I've already downloaded the, this data set, which contains the open feature, high, low, and close, as we were discussing, right? So let's see, okay. Uh, maybe some real world example. Or maybe before that, let's see uh, what kind of data we have on which we are trying to learn our model. So this will be uh, this is so this is the format of our data set, which is in the CSV format or uh, Excel file or something. Uh, so it contains open price, high price, low price, and the closing price. So we are use, going to use these four columns, and out of these four, maybe we can use one feature. Like we want, we can just use open as a X and close as a Y, or we can use open, high, and low and predict the closing price and vice versa and all those things, the permutation combination we can do, it depend upon the task you want to solve. So, so this is like, uh, once the file is dead, we, we got this open, high, low, and close. And we are using the low open only as a feature and close as a output, X and Y. Here I'm using X and Y, but so basically it's X and <clears throat> the Y. And we have plotted these, values open and high as a 2D plot and you can see this is forming some kind of line with the orientation I think of uh, maybe the 45 degree or 40 degree. So basically we need to predict M and C. <coughs> All right. So either we can use the same equation or if we want to avoid all those hectic thing and all those things. So someone has already provided us a library with the name of linear regression in our SQL line, scikit line. Scikit line is a very basic and popular machine learning library and consists of multiple machine learning models for us. So we have to just import that knowledge. Import it basically we are calling that function that uh, I want to use you for my particular task. <coughs> So I created the model, linear regression model, and I'm providing my feature and the value which I want as an output, Why? So the model will give me the coefficient value, which I can use to predict my output price. All right, so let's see. Okay, I have to first define the model. Oh, okay. <coughs> so X1 is basically opening price. So open price is 2763 and the closing price is 2875. Similarly for other uh, values we can see. So we have total 1556 as a feature. Uh, data points and then 1556 five, that should be equal to that only and these are the label points okay so the model is learned now to predict something we can use the function predict so to train the model we use fit function but for testing we have to use the predict function which basically means the model is going to use the parameters which model has learned using X and Y. That's the only thing uh, the model is going to do. We can also do the same thing. Once we got the parameters, we can use the equation Y equal to beta zero plus beta one X. And how we can do this is, uh, I think I've already written that equation. So using the intercept, parameter, we can get that intercept uh, value and using the coefficient parameter inbuilt uh, keyword, we can use the coefficient value. So once we got this value, we can compute y equal to, I think I have written now. 
okay if not i think uh, so we got this intercept and coefficient so basically intercept plus coefficient times x that's how you can get the output value and this is basically the model is predicting and this is the actual value so model is incurring a very high loss here so the features might not be very correct or the model the linear model you are learning is not sufficient to model the dependency so that's why we need maybe the complex model like non linear models where we might have to go for polynomial features or uh, more than polynomial features maybe more than 2 degree or 3 degree or something all right so, so it's not like the linear regression or any particular model is perfect for uh, or every application we might have to keep on changing uh, the models so i think that's all for linear regression any doubt Sir, uh, the, val the M value is to be determined by us. Yes, so M and C, basically we have to determine. Either we can, like manually we can do this, but it will be very te tedious task. So that's why we are using some kind of machine learning model. So machine learning model will tell us the value of what should be the ideal value of M. So M basically we have seen in the function is beta one. So beta one, uh, once we solve that equation y equal to mx plus c using the gradient descent and all those things, then we will see that what will be the equation of m, or basically the beta one. And using that equation only, we have uh, tried to learn the value of <coughs> this beta one basically is m. And the equation we have seen using that equation, we have learned the beta one and c, beta zero. Of e zero. All right. Any other doubt or uh, was there? Right. Uh, is this clear to you? <coughs> okay. So let's see uh, the another interesting domain of machine learning. So as I mentioned, that most of the times we are capturing the images and that might be tedious for us and maybe we cannot go everywhere to capture the images or we want to generate some images or we want to have some images which are very good looking but might be synthetic but synthetic means which we do not exist in the real world so i think that's another interesting thing maybe this person do not exist Let's see this website. Okay, so let's see. This was, maybe the university is not allowing. Okay, so whenever you will go to that website, it will give you one facial image generated using the GAN, generative adversarial network, one kind of machine learning architecture. And that image of a person which do not exist in this world. Because that image is generated using the machine learning uh, algorithm. Only. So again, you will click again, or you will go again to that uh, website, it will again give you another image. Again, it's a synthetic image. Uh, the website is also telling you that what kind of algorithm they have used to generate the images and the code and all the things you can also see. So this, this is the power of generative machine learning or the domain where which has been used to generate the images. So you can see this is a very high quality image and it's looking like a real person only. So the field has become that much mature that it can generate the images not only the facial images any kind of object images you can also generate like image of a cat dog car and all those things even using the textual description also you can generate the images like i want to see a particular kind of image so you will provide the description that this kind of image i want to see so chat chat gpt gpt3 and all those things diffusion model you are uh, my, you might have heard that machine learning algorithms have become so much mature that you can either provide a description or you can just provide some kind of data like this kind of image the network should run. So 
So this is basically uh, the interesting field uh, which we are going to see. In that ASL also multiple, uh, I think faculty, they teach us that how we can learn those models or how we can get a knowledge to learn all those things. All right. So let's see uh, which algorithm I'm talking about and how actually uh, this thing is happening. So which image you think uh, is a face image of a person which exists really in our world? A, B, or C. So basically all the images are fake. No one is a real human. The website I shown you, that's one example. Not, not everyone is uh, building a website or something, but everyone is building some kind of machine learning model. Those who are doing a research in that domain. So some researchers have uh, put that those face images for teaching. So this is something coming from the MIT, a course on deep learning only. So generative model. So generative basically, so we know that particular kind of distribution. So suppose I know that how someone walks. So I've already learned the distribution of that person, that how that person speaks, how that person write, how that person uh, walk and all those things. So similarly, if we know the distribution of the data set, like what is the exact distribution of the data set, whether it's following the Gaussian distribution, Poisson distribution, and all those things. So once we know the distribution of the data, basically the training data, so based on that distribution, by changing the parameters of the distribution, like if you are following the Gaussian distribution, you might have the parameter of mean and variance. So you might just slightly change the mean and variance, you can generate a different image. So that's, that's one simplest thing you can do just learn the distribution what distribution the data is following so like here maybe the curve is straight line and again we got the data point so there is some distribution here or some kind of mean and variance is here then all the data points are lying close to this location then here the mean and variance is high <coughs> or suppose <coughs> We want to generate the images of cat and dog. Then we know that what is the property or what is the distribution of a particular cat class? And what is the distribution of the dog class? Like uh, the IUC yesterday was talking about the eyes and ear and all those features of a cat and dog, that how the uh, facial feature, how the eyes, how the ears looks like for a dog and, and the cat. So that's basically the distribution is how those two different classes are look looking right so once we know that this is the particular properties or distribution then we can generate the data set easily so someone in 2014 there is a researcher known as goodfellow he presented an algorithm known as generative adversarial networks so that website i was showing you that was using the gans only g a n gans generative adversarial network to generate the high quality facial images. So in that we have two architectures. So obviously we want to generate the image. So there should be some architecture which generate the image while learning the distribution of the data. <coughs> and how you will know that whatever image has been generated by the generator network or whatever, suppose I'm produ producing one kind of image to you, how you will tell whether this is a good quality image, whether it's a real image or whether it's a fake image and all those things because you are generating the image. So basically it's a fake image only, right? So there should be someone which tell me whether it's a real image and it's a good quality or not. Because if it's a fake image and it's a very poor quality, obviously you will also not like it. So the image should also be very high quality, like these kind of images. The image quality should also be high. Otherwise it's not of that uh, much use. And one should not be able to tell me that these images are fake, maybe because of some kind of artifacts, like the eyes are not at the particular proper location, nose are not on the proper location, or all those things. So it should not be any kind of visual artifacts, which you can tell the images are fake. <coughs> so basically we have some network, some machine learning model, which will generate the images. And we have some kind of model which will tell me whether it's a generated image or whether it's a real image. So in a broad sense, so we have two network 
obviously uh, uh, it's very hard uh, in in this limited time to understand everything but let's understand from the broad broad sense that we have one network obviously we want to generate the images so there should be someone which will generate the images and there will be someone which will tell me whether the generated image is real or fake or whether the images the person is seeing is real or fake <coughs> so maybe uh, some other example let's see uh, so suppose you are a customer or you have a shop uh, some some someone who want to sell something so suppose you are a customer or the someone who is doing some kind of business and you want to sell your wine to some kind of shop owner right so if if you will sell the original wine obviously you might not be earning a lot of money but suppose if you are selling a fake wine to the shop owner which is of very low quality and of a very low price as well obviously the quality is low then the price should also be low but the shop owner don't know whether it's the real wine or the fake wine or it's a real beer or the fake beer and all those things or any any particular other item as well not only the beer or wine so suppose uh, you want to sell something but the shop owner don't know whether it's a real or fake so maybe the for the first time you might be successful in selling this fake wine or the unreal wine to the shop owner and get the very hefty amount from the shop owner but when the shop owner will serve this wine to the customer so the customer can tell whether it's the real wine or the taste of this wine is not same to the real wine so here the customers are your discriminator so here the customer will be discriminator which will tell that the wine which the shop owner is serving is real or fake and the generator is basically the customer which is trying to sell the wine so again next time once the shop owner knows that this is the fake wine the customer will again come with some variation of this wine sell this illegal or fake wine because obviously now the shop owner knows that this was a fake wine so he has to customer has to change uh, the product again maybe the customer will tell or uh, this is how the shop owner will also learn that what is the property of the fake wine and what is the property of the real wine so that's basically uh, maybe in the real world example of the machine learning thing or the thing that how we learn as well all right so suppose uh, so generator is learning generating some kind of data so suppose generator has generated this uh, data on 1d uh, line now the role of the discriminator is to tell whether this data is real data or fake data but for that discriminator should know what exactly the real data look like or what is the distribution of the real data so we have to provide the real data so obviously if the customers whom the shop owner is selling the wine if they don't know the real taste of the wine they will not be able to identify whether it's a fake wine or the real wine so someone should tell or someone should know that what is the distribution or what is the real taste of a real wine similarly here whenever this discriminator can tell whether it's a real or fake data the discriminator should know whether it's a real or fake distribution so here whatever data generator has generated is lying far behind or far away from your real data so it's easy for the discriminator to tell whether it's a, these data points are real or fake because real data should lie this uh, at this location but they are lying very far behind uh, far away from these real data points okay so what the generator should do the generator should move our data point the generated data point close to these data points only so that the discriminator is not able to identify whether these are the real data points or the fake so generator will keep on moving these data points like you have seen from here the generator is moving close to the real data points there will be one time where the data points the generator is generating it will be like very close on or on top of the real data points so that we can fool the discriminator all right so basically you are you keep on going uh, to the shop owner with a different variation of your wine 
until and unless you know that now the shop owner will also not able to identify whether this is a real wine real beer or real product or not so that's basically the gain and these are again like as we have seen for the regression problem so we need some kind of loss function so similarly here this is a loss function or this is a function which we want to maximize or minimize right so so recent advancements is like we can see the facial images those are like very of high quality and the textual feature of the faces are also very high so generator has learned that the glasses might be there the person might have a different expression as well like someone might be smiling someone might be serious or something or the different pose might also be there with the faces like it's a frontal face someone is just looking uh, towards the camera or just looking straight but this might have some kind of pose like 30 degree 45 degree of a face so not only the real face there the variation in the faces can also be learned using this technique because it's all depend upon the data you are providing obviously if the data real data you are providing contains all those characteristics or the features the network will know that all these variation can also be possible in the generated images so as i told you that not only the facial images object images can also be generated like cat images you can see a very high quality and it's like looking like a real cat sitting on somewhere then the horse and all those things you can see a lot of variation in those old images some are winter grass and all those things variation we can see so there is a gain too uh, which basically con consist of uh, multiple tool boxes multiple papers someone has created a directory or created a ticket hub link where you can go and check what kind of development towards the gains has been uh, there so i think let's see because uh, it's difficult to train uh, the gains model it requires a lot of time and lot of memory as well but uh, let's see maybe uh, in brief so so we need some kind of data so mnist is basically the digit recognition data set i am not sure how many of you are aware of that this data set so this is basically uh, the hand digit kind of data set so kind uh, so basically we have 10 classes 0 to 9 so 10 digits are possible there so and these are some kind of images which are there in the data set for zero there are some variation because obviously if there is no variation the network will not be able to learn all those variations as well like here we have seen a lot of variation so training data also have those variations otherwise the network will not be able to know that these are the possible variation which is there in the images so some noise might be there some all those like four can be like this like this the orientation and four can also be like this <coughs> so mnist is basically this data set only mnist all right so we are loading this data set which is basically 28 cross 28 image and 28 cross 28 basically will be 784 if you flatten out 28 cross 28 right 28 cross 28 784 right so that's basically the dimension of the image all right so maybe you guys want to see no okay, i don't think so i printed it out no okay, and then as i will call uh, we will not be able to see so so basically uh, so what we have seen in the gans we have two architectures one is generator and one is discriminator so generator again contains of cnn kind of architecture only convolution layer dense layer and all those layers similarly the discriminator will also have the same kind of layers but in a different format or different kind of connections will be there all right so i was trying to train the network uh, i was training for 200 epochs and it was taking like 5 hours or 6 because we are using the free platform so i've trained for 5 epochs so i've trained for 5 epochs 
So obviously, uh, the the higher the number of epochs, the quality of generated image will be high. But at least for five epochs also, we can see some images are getting generated. Like this might be image of three or eight. Again, if we will keep training our network, it will keep on updating or keep on changing the quality of the generated images. So, but for the time being, uh, this is the image of three and this is the image of nine and this is eight, this is five. But it has, as human also, we can maybe we are very good in avoiding some kind of noises. So the background noise and able to predict some kind of other class. But yeah, as I told you that for these networks, we have to train them very long. Maybe 1000 epochs, 10,000 epochs and all those things we need. But here, as I told you that uh, it was taking a lot of time and I have to show you some, something in this class. So I have trained this network for five epochs only. So I think for five epochs, uh, decent quality images we are seeing, all right? But if we train for 20 epochs or 30 epochs, I think the quality will be much better. So I can run, I think I have to run the entire code. Let's train, okay, because I've already trained. So you can see how slow uh, the current GPU or the current computing platform is. So that's why I trained for five. So, but now I, I thought I can also train for 10, then 20 and all those things, but it was taking a lot of time. So if you have the good quality computing platform or good quality GPU, then obviously you can trade. All right. Any, any question, any doubt? So in the regression we have seen, we have some real data as a feature <coughs> and want to real value as an output as well. The examples were uh, the price of a house, the price of a stock price, and or maybe if not all, if you are not interested towards all those uh, monetary things, then maybe the grade of your course and all those things. All right. So grade will be your real value, and you want to predict that thing. So that's where we need the regression. Then we have seen the generative adversarial networks. So the aim of those GANs is basically, we want to predict or generate the images, <laughs> good quality images. And for that, we have seen that there are two architectures. One is basically generating the images and second one is telling whether the generated image is real or a fake, like the shop owner or the beer wine example or fake or real product example. Suppose someone wants to sell <coughs> the fake product, maybe the first time the customer might be, get successful to sell the illegal product or the wrong product. But the customer might be the real discriminator, which can tell the owner that you are selling a wrong product. So that's how the customer will keep on updating or the cheater will keep on updating the product so that once the time will be there, that it will sell the product, which is very similar to the original product. Like in social media also, we are seeing a lot of product which looks like exactly similar to the original product. So that's, that, that's the process where the cheater or illegal person try to keep on changing the product so that the final product looks very similar to the original product. Any, any doubt uh, on these two topics? Because GANs is like very sophisticated technique. I cannot show you uh, that how we can train the model. As, as, as I'm showing you that it is taking a lot of time. Still it's training, I think, and, on, and so far it's two talk only. So half an hour at least it will take for to train the 10 epochs. And I don't think so, we have uh, that much amount of time. Otherwise there will be no class. We will just keep on seeing uh, the training of the model only. Any doubt? So uh, let's see maybe another topic because we have some time. So one, another topic 
an interesting topic and which is very relevant for us as well is a fake news so one fake news example we can see here is the fake news around the death of a famous hollywood personality still on diet at the age of 69 <clears throat> and footage is also there obviously that's a fake uh, news right but if you don't know how the fake news looks like or how that this can also be fake news we might believe this and might react on social media or in, in our friends group and all those things which might be wrong or which might be right so we have to identify whether it's a real news or whatever news we are reading is real or fake and it's very important for our day to day life because we're dealing with the news uh, somewhere and somehow suppose if the actor don't react obviously for you maybe you might not able to identify it's a real thing or fake but it's good that uh, actor responded to that uh, fake news and tell their his fan that it's a stupidity and don't believe on, on all those things in indian context also we have also seen a couple of news around uh, the death of some famous uh, celebrities right so some uh, recent example of fake news is of new year only january 11 2023 rp of recruitment notification for 19800 constable post which is basically fake a fake railways ministry clarifies that so if there is no one to clarify whether the news is fake or real how you can uh, say that it's a real news or a fake news or how you can use the capacity or capability of machine learning models or machine learning algorithm to classify whether it's a real news or fake news because not every time someone is going to verify the news for you <coughs> so three youtube channels also with 33 lakh subscribers so obviously uh, you can see the how much money they were earning by just spreading the fake news and no one was there to tell or no expert was there to tell whether whatever news you are consuming or whatever thing you are consuming is fake thing all right and these are like recent things only like december 2022 December twenty two thousand twenty two, right? Similarly, okay. So interesting news. Don't get your hopes too high. Government debunks the fake news on unlimited alcohol supply. All right. So all those variations of the fake news can be there, which might impact a different uh, group of a society, and you might just be reacting on on everything which you are seeing on social media. without verifying whether it's a real thing or the fake thing the only reason might be like because obviously not everyone is a expert to identify whether it's a real news or fake news or not every time an expert is available to tell you that it's a fake thing or the real thing so some kind of uh, observation you can see maybe some kind of extraordinary monetary thing or monetary advantage might be there in the title of that news so some doubt might be there that this might be a fake news like uh, in the email also we have seen a lot of uh, fake announcement that you have won this much amount maybe from kbc or you know or any other uh, platform so obviously we are seeing that a uh, hefty amount which obviously you are you have not participated in that uh, website or something but still you are able to win the prize so some doubt will be there in your mind similarly here whenever you are seeing some kind of news try to use your knowledge maybe to check whether it's the real and fake if you have still have a doubt then maybe go to expert or maybe use any existing machine learning model or maybe train your own machine learning model and create that as an app and use that app to check every news whether it's a real news or fake news so bbc also uh, said that facebook struggles in its battle against fake news in india the fake news not necessarily will be in the form of textual data but it can be in the form of images as well and images and text images basically the caption images and the caption 
All right, we have seen a lot of images, fake images from Ukraine, Russia war as well. So fake news will always be there. And we have to learn that can we identify whether it's a real or fake? Or can we have some kind of application which can tell us that it's a real thing or fake news? So suppose we have the image and the textual description. So one thing can be, we can learn a two models, one model which will tackle the image information. So visual information. So one network will tackle the visual information and the another network will tackle the textual information. So this is this is one architecture. So there can be multiple architecture as well. Right? So by combining the information of textual data and the image data, we will take some kind of decision that whether it's a real, real picture or real news we are learning or we are seeing, or it's a fake news. So whether there is an expert which can tell us, look for these kind of features, or you can train an automated algorithm which will identify the fake features or the real features from the data, which are data you are providing. All right. Any any doubt? So okay, let's see uh, the fake news classification problem as well. So this was for Bitcoin. I think okay. <clears throat> So this is data set. Uh, you can easily find all those data sets publicly available because these are like publicly available data sets only. I have not created the, these data sets. These are like publicly available on GitHub, on Google and all those. Things. So it contains four columns. First column is basically ID. So ID cannot be unique. Sorry, the ID will be unique, but it so it cannot be act any kind of feature. We got ID will not provide you any kind of information related to fake news or the real news. But the title or the textual description, so whatever title we are seeing, and there, there might be some news related to that title as well. So there is a title, this is the title of the news, and there will be some description of the news. So here the title means the title, and text means the description of that news. And the label is basically telling us, so someone has already labeled the data for us, whether it's the real news or the fake news. Like here, uh, this india.com is telling us that this is the fake news or a railways ministry has clarified whether this is the real news or the fake news. So the label is already there. Someone has provided us the label where this news is a fake news, all right? So this is basically means by the label. So it's a classification problem because the label can be zero or one. Zero means maybe the real news and one is a fake news or the vice versa, all right? So let's see, let's read this data set. Because data is my Google Drive, so it's just asking the permission. should not take that much time. So, okay, uh, once the data will be there. So we are using title as our feature and we are using obviously label as a label only. So this is the data set. So we are uh, showcasing five data points and corresponding labels. So this is the fake news, fake news, then real, re, real, fake, real. So we got the data and we got the labels. So we are extracting title column and using that as our feature and label feature as our label, real or fake, all right? And again, a uh, lot of maths and lot of technique uh, will be there. Uh, because obviously for machine learning model we have to provide the numerical data and here we have the textual data so we have to convert this textual data 
to some form of linear data or the numerical data. So this basically the fit transform and all those things will do uh, for us. And we are training the multi normal name based. So Bayesian theorem, I think uh, we already know, we have some kind of prior probabilities and we have some kind of likelihood. What is the likelihood of a particular event is uh, happening if the features are given. Like suppose the sun is there, what is the probability that there will be a rain? And if there is a cloudy environment, then what is the probability that the rain or the weather will be warm or cold. So basically, what is the probability of happening a certain event based on some some kind of circumstances? So that's basically the name based theorem or the base theorem is. So, so that's basically the simplest thing uh, you can use. And it's telling me that the score is basically telling me the accuracy of our model. So, but that, that's uh, in this lecture, obviously, in this uh, symposium, we cannot explain you everything. Obviously, that you have to maybe go through the online courses and all those things, or maybe attend uh, the AI Shala lecture series. Okay, so now we got our model. And now, suppose we provide this news as an input. Then we want to know whether this title or the title of the news is real or fake. So whatever information the network has used to train the model, according to that, the network is telling me that this news is looking like a real news. Because there is no uh, such extraordinary modernity advantage and all those extraordinary uh, things are there, which can claim that this is a fake news or something. Maybe if that's the feature the network is looking. But obviously, this this is uh, the fake news we have also seen during the COVID uh, days that cow dung can cure the coronavirus. The network is also telling us that this is the fake news. All right, so that's how we can learn our fake news detection model as well. So we have seen the regression where we have to predict the real values. Then we have seen the generative networks to generate the synthetic images. And in the end, we have seen this fake news classification. So class machine learning technique only. So because why supervise? Because we have the data and we have some kind of supervision. Someone has already told me that this is the real thing or this is the fake news or, or basically some kind of label someone has already provided to me. Based on this original data points and the label, we have trained some model and used that model to predict on some kind of real data where we don't know the exact label maybe. So like we have seen these two examples, one is real news according to the model and one is a fake news according to the model, whatever model or whatever data point that would have seen based on that information. All right, so again, all these are like very important topics, uh, not only for research, but also as a general, uh, public as well because we have to predict or we have to somehow know the price of our house whatever house we want to buy whatever stock we want to buy or what weight i'm going to get in the end or whatever i'm reading is real news or fake news similarly suppose uh, i am not a painter but i want i have a fantasy to generate a very good quality or very fancy uh, paintings so for that also the generative models can be used to generate all those fancy images for me so that I can use uh, this as a wall painting uh, in my room or in my house as well. So this also might be interesting for you as well. And obviously in this limited time, telling all the math, telling you all the uh, things, how you can train all of those things, it's difficult. So that's, but that's why obviously uh, the courses are there. And, and in Ayeshala, I think Anil sir and Ayushi, they all are teaching uh, and they are very good. They have detailed knowledge of all those techniques as well. So if you're interested, maybe you can uh, go through the website and all those things. But for the time being, let's see if you have any doubt or anything. 
or how was the lecture for you? Have you understood anything? Not understood anything? Any kind of feedback on any kind of question or anything you want to ask? No question. If you will not ask any question, obviously, how we will ensure that uh, again, it's a kind of discriminated knowledge only, right? So suppose you have learned something or you have understood something that might not be correct or that might be correct maybe. If it's correct, obviously, that's good for you. But if it's not correct, you need some kind of validation to know that whatever thing I have understood is correct. So generator and discriminator. So you are producing some kind of information that I understood this thing and I need the validation from me, the discriminator that yes, you have understood the correct thing or you have not understood or this is wrong. Uh, all right, any so. Uh, was there any pressure from the institute uh, because of which you are attending? There seems like if you are interested, then you should, I think. Asked, or if it's clear everything, then yeah, it's good. Thank you, Kishore. I think I will check. Sabicha Sachi shared the link where you can provide the feedback and attendance. I think so. Please uh, do all the needful. And again, uh, I'm sorry that uh, because of in limited time, it's difficult to uh, tell everything and to teach you everything. Obviously, you have to uh, go through the uh, detailed uh, lectures or detailed thing about it. Like there can like there can multiple layers in the neural network can be used can we make use of multiple discriminators in our model? Uh, you can use, but what exactly? Will be the pur purpose of that. So maybe obviously you can use uh, anything. Uh, first thing, it will increase your computation time because training the multiple discriminators will take a lot of time, right? Each discriminator training might affect your final performance. So in place of that, maybe train a better discriminator model. Maybe the higher uh, multiple layers of neural network or anything, or multiple neurons and all those things. You can increase the multiple neurons. You can increase the layers in the neuron, or maybe the in place of neural networks, maybe use CNNs and all those things. But if you want, obviously, you can use the multiple discriminator as well. Same that is generator also. You can use the multiple generators as well. So somehow fuse them to maybe better improve your generative uh, images. No one will stop you. It's just like uh, you have to see how much time you have, how much computing resources you have to train a particular model, and how you want to combine. Like suppose you are not combining your multiple discriminator knowledge, or how you, if you are not combining your multiple uh, generative models, then from which model you should pick the generated images, or from which model uh, you should say that discriminator this discriminator net, not discriminator network is. Uh, telling me the truth or another network is not telling me the truth. So you have to learn that combination as well, right? But yeah, again, uh, for your, uh, to the answer to your question is like, you can use obviously uh, multiple discriminators. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, but uh, Mohammed, uh, it's clear, or uh, yeah. If anyone is having any doubts, please ask now. And I think Google Meet don't save the chat information. So if you are asking or if you want to note down the questions or the answer as well, so I think that's your responsibility, I think. There is a request from student side, sir. They want this code files to be shared so that they can practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I will see. Uh, I think I should be able to say, but otherwise, I will provide the resources from there. Uh, from there, they can learn. 
and if they could get the recordings it would be really helpful uh, recording i think sabya or anil can i think <clears throat> hi so recordings are shared with professor molari you can get from there like today only i shared the folder and all the days will be added there okay fine yeah because multiple resources are coming uh, from multiple online resources as well so although uh, so it's always important to cite them and all those things and to take the permission to them. but yeah recording is there so i think that that should be helpful <coughs> so oh, if there's no doubt i think sabya you know, 